Hi everyone, I hope uh, I hope this finds you well and that you're uh, managing to, I don't know, remain relatively at peace in yourself at this time. Because the times we are living in are quite turbulent, aren't they? They're, they're chaotic, there's a lot of uncertainty around. So, for example, with, with the COVID stuff that we've had these last uh, couple of years, that's been quite uh, quite difficult for many and has created a lot of um, uncertainty in our in our culture and our society, and, and there seems to be an element of uh, of hope about the idea of coming out of the other end of that, but yet still recognizing that COVID is with us. But of course, now we've got more going on, haven't we? Um, we've got a potential for war in Eastern Europe with uh, Russia's in, invasion of Ukraine. And again, that, that continuing turbulence that, that that could bring. And we, as a church, we're looking at courage and what it means to be courageous. So how, how can we could be courageous in this situation we're in now? You see, over these last, um, well, many decades in this, in this country in particular, we've had it good, haven't we? We've had uh, prosperity and comfort and, uh, and peace and and good health generally and covid and what's going on now um is kind of shaking all that a bit and it it, it helps me to to think about where where do we put our confidence you know where's our confidence is it in our comfort and, and our and our stuff that we have which might just go in an instant i mean our economies not as strong as it was and and because the world economy is so intertwined now much more than it ever was um, when one thing kind of crumbles the whole lot has the potential to go so is your confidence in that is it well i mean you know you and i might say it's not but actually if we suddenly lose all our savings or things like that we what do we do with that you know um well, our confidence is and and should be in the Lord, and sometimes this this kind of shaking helps us to determine uh, how we focus on God and and what we do in in times like these. So I have a, a sense that I'm rabbiting just a little bit, so I'll I'll get to it. Today we're going to be thinking about uh, what it means to be courageous in prayer. Now I use prayer in the loosest kind of term in um today because i want us to think of prayer in terms of talking with god um yeah that that's what i mean by prayer in, in this sense because the the um example we're going to use is from the old testament in exodus chapter oh excuse me exodus chapter 33 so i'll just read uh, uh a chunk of exodus exodus chapter 33 to you now then the Lord said to Moses, leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, saying, I'll give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. But I will not go with you because you're a stiff necked people and I might destroy you on the way. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Moses was up the mountain um, receiving the, the uh, commandments from God and receiving the law from God. And, uh, and the people built a golden calf to worship. And, and basically the, the, the camp at the bottom of the mountain had become a mess. People worshipping the golden calf and then they were just wandering around and, and, and it was just chaos. And God had had enough. And uh, the calf was ground to dust and they were made to eat it. And then uh, people strapped on swords and went about slaying um, their fellow Israelites, actually. And, it, and I mean, it must have just been awful. And God had had enough of these people uh, and said, look, I'll, I'll send an angel with you, but I, I've had enough. I'm not going with you because I might destroy you on the way. So that's that's kind of the background. So verse four. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, 
Tell the Israelites, you're a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you, even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. Now these were a group of people who had been uh, set free from slavery. And God's hand was on them. His favour was with them. They, you know, He had destroyed uh, the army that was chasing them down. He had made a way for them through the sea. And they, they just still weren't listening to him, were they? Or being obedient to him. And Moses, he... He's been called by God to lead these people. And so what he does, what he did, he he came to God and spoke with him on behalf of the people. And that's what that's what intercession is. It's speaking with God on behalf of others. And so picking it up at verse 12, this is what Moses said. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and have found favor, fa- and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, "My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest." So earlier, God was saying, "I've had enough. I'll send an angel," and now He's saying, "Okay." I'll, I will go with you. Why? Because Moses stepped in to that gap. Moses stepped in and said, you know, I found favour with you. And if you're pleased with me, teach me your way so I can continue to find favour with you. And remember that these are your people. So we, we find ourselves in the world we live in today. And... What are you and I going to do about this this mess, this chaos? We can come to our God, can't we? We can be courageous in our prayers. And we can say, God, you made the heavens and the earth. You made these people. Would you come and intervene in this situation? This evening at six o'clock from six till 6.45 here in this church building, there's an opportunity to pray for the people of Ukraine. Please do come along and be part of that. Let's raise our voices to God on behalf of the people of Ukraine together. And you never know, God might do something. He might perform that miracle, that thing that we want to happen, that ceasing of devastation and destruction and killing might happen if we come to God and plead on the behalf of those people. So let's uh, take this opportunity this evening. Let's take this opportunity today to recognise that you know we're we're in a mess and we need God, and we 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 need to be courageous with with coming to God and praying and interceding and stepping in that gap like Moses did on behalf of other people. So let's uh, let's just take a moment now and pray. Father God, you are the one who hears the cries of your children. And you're not a father who ignores their children. You know how to give good gifts to those who ask. And so, Lord, we ask that you would give Ukraine the gift of peace. That you would cause a ceasefire and productive and constructive talks to take place and that you would bring peace to that nation lord would you halt the uh, the russian incursion into that country and send them back on their way lord prince of peace would you bring peace to that nation for your glory in jesus name amen Well, it's great to spend this time with you today. Uh, Have a good day and may God bless you richly. Bye for now.